is because like the, the religions, the cultures, your age, like you've been through a lot and you've had a, 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 a rough life. You, you have. When people have been through a lot, cuando han tenido que soportar muchas cosas, they have to mature quickly. But that, what happens if you mature quickly? In ciertos aspectos de tu vida, like you, you understand quickly what you have to do. But in other aspects of your life, you kind of abandon them. So, like, my, like, I guess also that's why I've heard here in Mexico that, like, Cristianos are locos. They're crazy. No. There are different, like, when you get into religion, like, you, you told me the other day, like, I started reading the Bible. Like, it's, <laughs> how do I say this? Um, my parents are are Christian, not Orthodox, not um, Testigos testigo de Jehová, not Lutheran, not, they're just the standard division of Christian. What that means is you accept, like, Jesus Christ into your heart. You, you follow the Ten Commandments strictly, strictly, all right? My dad era un misionero aquí in Mexico before I was born. He was a missionary. He would go to pueblos and pueblos and teach about God to the point where in God's teachings, if someone's like hitting you or something, literally you turn the other cheek. If you so happen to die, you're going to go to heaven. Or if it's really, really bad, God will step in and you know he'll help. That to that kind of a point where you literally have to change your life do certain things, be part of the church. Yeah, you have people say here, oh, see, soy, soy católico. And when you drive by the church, to say, Besa ni persina and all that. But then they, like, people here, Catholics and Christians are completely different things. They're completely, it's not the same thing. Now, to be, a, to be a Christian or to be a church member is un mundo aparte from being a pastor. You understand that, like, you don't just learn a little bit about God and then get in front. No, especially in the US. My dad went to a university. Fue por dos años uh, en persona, and de hecho, he, he took me. I would go with him, and I would go to the library, and I would play games on the computer. He went for two years to a, a university. He took courses, pastor courses, theology courses, he, for uh, somewhere in Spanish, somewhere in English. We had to abandon that porque nos tocó una racha fea. He finished his last two years online. My dad had to get a, a degree and a certificado to be a pastor. He had to do all that. Then, when you're a pastor, you have to behave and be a certain way. You can't be on the first comment exploding and you have to be wise and you have to be calm and you have to be passive like the ocean you have to be like like you cannot be uh in a hole and you can't be so one thing is like it's a sin in the bible to smoke or get drunk like drunk to the point where it's like every day because your body is a temple cigarettes the tar the tar in, in cigarettes hurts your lungs being drunk every single day is bad for your health things like that so when people see priests or, or pastors drink they automatically assume there's nothing wrong with one beer or two beers yeah, one cigarette, it still has tar. So yeah, it's a sin. It's, and the, you see all that? So you're supposed to, literally, you have to you have to do certain things. And my dad has done almost everything, almost everything to change his life. My dad my dad used to be a drunk, um, a smoker. My dad used to behave a certain way in like, but now as a pastor, he's much different now. Like, they were like, the way he treated me when I was a kid and the way he treats me now is way different, way different. The only thing he cannot change because it's beyond normal. It's it's beyond. It's, it's algo más de allá. It's his temper. He still loses his temper. Now, cuando eres cristiano, you're taught that all of life is precious. Todo bajo el reino de Dios es precioso, perfecto, lindo. So you are on the on the uh, side of life, right? So even though abortion, logically and legislatively, so por la ley, like, it should be legal. Like, it, it's the right thing. If, if a young girl gets raped, she gets pregnant, should she have the kid? No. And if she wants to choose to not to have it, that makes all sense. But as a Christian, you have to be on the side of life. That's why Republicans vote no, like that it's not legal because they're trying to protect the, the what's the fetus. Now, uh, being gay is a sin, but God doesn't hate you. So that's been misinterpreted, right? All this has been misinterpreted. Anyway, lo que estoy llegando. So my mom is Christian and she's married to a pastor and she hates with like, like, más de allá. Not that, not, not that like she doesn't like, no, she hates. You're not supposed to hate. When you're a Christian, you're not supposed to hate, especially an innocent creature in God's kingdom. She hates animals. She hates them. She talks bad about them. She, like, God, girl, it's, it's bad. So this is why your argument of, yeah, but they're human, they're human. No, it doesn't work. That's like me saying, yeah, I'm vegetarian. I, I tell the whole world I'm vegetarian. I public, uh, lo publico en mis redes. But whenever I go to restaurants or whatever, I eat meat. I eat meat like nothing. You're literally defying your code or your creed or your theology. You're going against it. That's why I don't go around saying that I'm Christian. That's why I don't go around saying that I'm like a perfect um, religious man. And that's why it affects me so much when my parents like do things, the things they do, because my mom is always talking to everyone about God. Well, my dad, he has to, because it's a job. But my mom, she's like, I know, uh, hermana, vamos a orar por ti. Oh, it's like, 
So not only do I not tell people, not only do I not tell them like, oh, brother, I'm going to pray for you. So I don't do that shit. Secondly, behind closed doors, like, <laughs> I'm not a fucking, yeah, I'm a pastor's kid, but I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. Like, I'm on the other side of life. I'm not like preaching to churches, you know? Like, I don't ever want to be a hypocrite. And you got to understand, like, I don't know, I don't know if you're listening, if, if you made it this far. Like, it's wild. Like, this this religious stuff is pretty wild. Like, my my dad has stories where they've been lost. They've been lost before in Mexico, in U.S., things like that. And suddenly, like, he claims, like, they were angels. Like, angels saved them. My dad, like, once went to a pueblo with my mom. No, no, no. No, I think, he, yeah, he was with my mom and two students from the church. But, like, they were studying to be uh, miembros, uh, uh, senior me members, right? They got lost. This was years ago when there was no GPS. There was no cell phones. This was, like, in the, in the 80s, 90s. And they found a little in, like, in un pueblito or something. But it, they told me it was, it was pretty much deserted. Like, there's nothing there. Kind of, it was small, tiny, nothing there. One house. There was one house there with an old, old couple. It was the only house that had people in it. Like, everything else was just a ghost town. They sat down. The the old couple, they're like, oh, tienen hambre? Oh, ya han comido? They had, gone, they had gone over 24 hours without anything to eat. My mom and dad had not eaten for, for a whole day. Um, like, almost a whole day. So they were starving. And the the lady said, like, oh, pues una disculpa. Solo somos como muy humildes, sabe, like that. Like, you know, they were poor and things like that. It was like tiny, tiny pueblito. Solo tenemos frijoles. So they said, oh, lo que sea, frijoles con tortillas. Like, está bien, nomás que tenemos mucha hambre. Si nos puede ayudar y things like that, right? Um... So my dad prayed for the food and prayed, like he prayed like tienes que orar antes de cada comida. Well, we used to do that when we were younger, or when I was younger. And my mom, my dad, like he has a temper and, and all this and that, but he's not like a liar. Like when my dad gives you his word, like he gives you his word. And even my mom, for them to collaborate the same story, like I don't think this is lying or fiction, right? The way my mom and dad say it is that basically like the beans, they like multiplied. They would take two or three spoonfuls of the beans and like in a little bowl with tortillas, they wouldn't run out. And my mom and dad were like like a little shocked, but like they're really really people of faith, right? So they were shocked, but like they kept eating. In no podían, my mom, my dad, and the two students, they couldn't finish the beans. The plate would never no se reducía de frijoles. That is just one of the stories that like <laughs> vale la pena dedicar. No, no porque manejas por una iglesia y te persinas. Wow, it is una persona that no, 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 get the fuck out of my car, bro. The next time I see something, now that I know how bullshit everyone is here, the next time, because they're persinan in, in my car or something, when I get a car, I'm kicking them the fuck out, because that, that's when I know they're a hypocrite. When you dedicate your life to God, you there's literally, like, la dieta de uh, Daniel, there's a way to eat. The Jews eat a certain way. There's a way to live your life. There's a way how to live your church life. The Ten Commandments. When you're a person of faith, like my mom and dad, and my dad's a pastor, there's no excuse. There's no, yeah, but they're human. You don't know. <laughs> no, you literally, that's what it means to be a Christian or a pastor. Dios mío, a pastor. Girl, <laughs> just uh, one last thing and, and I'm done with audio. Like, um, I don't know if you, well, no, there's no way you heard of it or whatever. Un dia, um, they, they told a story in teleperformance, in TP, where I worked when I first got here. That like two or three years ago, una de las niñas was right outside of TP on a break, smoking a cigarette, y que vino un hombre, con una pistola. Y le dijo, like, give me my money, right? Like, give me my money. Or no, give me, give me your money. Sorry. So it's a, it's a, a huge story into that performance, something like that. And one of the, like, uno, uno de los cholos, when the story was done, he's like, man, I would have beat that motherfucker. Ugh. You know, all in English and shit. And, and we started like, some people started cracking up and all that. And I'm like, yo reforcé esa idea. And I'm like, well, you got to do something or like, you have to because like, this is Mexico. This is the Wild Wild West. It's a different place. But at the same time, like, maybe the gun doesn't have bullets. But anyways, like, Oh, uh, oh, okay, okay. Ya me acordé. Di un argumento como más de allá. So I actually stated, like, you have to do something. Because tele everyone stops by teleperformance or or that. Cuando están, son deportados. Or, like, every deportado knows about uh, call centers and teleperformance. If a man ever were to shoot a girl and murder in front of teleperformance, do you know how much that would hurt Puebla? Like, I said that kind of a comment. And someone replied to me. Someone said, like, Chuy, like, stop trying to be all tough. Stop trying to be all manly. We all know you would have run away. And I looked at him and I said, Dude, I wouldn't act, or I'm not saying all this, because I'm trying to be manly. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. I'm doing it, uh, and then, y luego contesté con esto. I'm saying all this, or I stand up for the right things, or, or I stand up for things, because it's the right thing to do. And people kind of, like, didn't know how to reply. Ni dos meses después. I think I, I told you this, but um, a girl was at a party with, like, we we're all co-workers in teleperformance. A girl was at a party, a guy got drunk, 
he tried to rape her. She called me and she said, hey, like, I, I need help. Like, long story short, I went, I stood up to him. I told him to fuck off. And like, he threatened me and her with a knife. And then I helped her get her things and we left. Now, people want to tell me like, oh, you just did this because you wanted to fuck her. She's a lesbian. Why would I want to fuck a lesbian? She's not that pretty. Secondly, she's a friend of mine. So because I wanted sex, I stood up to a criminal. He was in, he was in prison for eight years. So see, like people are already ignoring the fact that I'll stand up to a criminal. I'll do all this shit to be tough, to be cool, to be, no, because it's the right thing to do. You know, now my parents, my dad, like I'm saying, my dad has changed his life and is trying to live by that code because it's the right thing to do. The only thing he can't change maybe because of nature, because yeah, it's, it's DNA. It's like hardcore. You see Toneta put it in his DNA. Like, vas a ser enojón hasta el culo. <laughs> now my mom, she hates animals so much. She'll talk shit about them in front of people. Girl, I don't even like, that's not even necessary. <laughs> she loves to express her hate for animals when she's a Christian. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, this is fucking insane. From like so many different perspectives. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why? <laughs>